up with God, down in him. Thanks be unto God that gives us victory in Jesus Christ. Psalm 8 from the Message Bible, we're in this series of worship, and I want us to read this together. Are you ready? Here we go. I look at my micro self and wonder why do you bother with us? Why take a second look our way? Because of your level of praise today, and I don't need to say a whole lot, but I want to ask you some questions here. Is it possible to worship without the God of the scriptures? Is it, is it possible to worship, second question, and not be accepted by God? And third question, is it possible to worship with the living Lord inside of you and not be enthusiastic? To the first question, is it possible to worship without the God of the scriptures? Yes. 
you can. Uh, here's the part that we need to be concerned about. You can worship in fervency of spirit and not be accurate in the truth. And there must be both present. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. Years ago, I was just a babe in Christ, um, appointed as the music director of the church, and this was probably back in the 70s. I taught a song because it sounded good. Jesus will never say no. And we get to the vamp and people would just go in. They'd be shouting all over the place. I have to repent because that was wrong. God will say no. And as Minister Jackie is praising God, is that you ought to be glad that he says no to some of our crazy requests that were not in his will. And right there, we can praise him. Remember, Paul asked him to remove a thorn in his flesh three times, and God didn't do it. But there's something, even when he says no, there's a blessing. Because Paul found out that God's grace is sufficient. The second question, can you worship and not be accepted by God? You know the answer to that. Cain, his heart was not there. And then the third question, is it possible to worship God and having the living Lord inside of you and not be enthusiastic? It's possible. Jesus said to the religious leaders, they honor me with their lips, but their, their hearts. And we got to make sure that our hearts are right, are lined up with God. That's, that's really, really critical, not just in here, but in all of our walks of life. Because if you're going to be a worshiper, you cannot take a great God and put him in narrow compartments of your life. Well, he's great in here, but then he's small on the job. Can't do that. He's great. Anyhow. Where, where do we get these, the stuff that we're up and down in our worship? Um, one is the demands of life. You're going, 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 going. The other are the distractions of life. The enemy is constantly pulling away at us because... He knows what can happen when you really move into a place of worship. David had demands that I can't even wrap my mind around, and yet he always worshiped God. There were distractions all around him, but yet he came back to worship in God. He was, here's the word, enthusiastic. He worshiped God, what I'm trying to say, enthusiastically. Yeah. 
Minister Jackie Comforth, I asked her during the praise break to look up the word enthusiasm for us out of Webster's Dictionary. Listen to this. It is a practice or interest that is very popular for a short time. A practice or interest that is very popular for a short time. What's the second definition? Is that Webster? That's Webster. Okay. Uh oh. Now there's some synonyms. The buzz, chic, craze, cry, fad, fashion, flavor. Go, hot ticket. The last word, the latest mode, rage, sensation, style, ton, trend, vogue. A crush, infatuation, a passion. That's it, passion. Mm -hmm. A fervor. Yeah, passion, fervor. Fervor. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody say passion, fervor. Here's another definition, actually, of Webster's. It's a belief in special revelations of the Holy Spirit. That's in Webster. Enthusiasm. A belief in special revelations of the Holy Spirit. Webster's passion, fervor is what we know. But you will understand the second definition when I tell you this, that our English word enthusiasm comes from a Greek word, actually two Greek words combined, entheos, E-N-T-H-E-O-S. Entheos. The E-N means in. Theo is God. Enthusiasm comes from the fact that we are in God. You're made of body, soul, and spirit. Your spirit was created to worship God. That is the purpose of your being. In theos. In theos. In God. When I come to that recognition, everything in life and everything around me changes. Yeah, that is raining. I'm, I'm feeling it all over me. Entheos, say that. So then, if you think about it, if you allow yourself to think about it, and if you allow your spirit to ascend into the heavens, then every Christian in this room ought to be enthusiastic automatically as the spirit, the Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit. And we don't exist just absent-minded but we are believers. We're believers of special revelations from the Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Spirit reminds us of the fact that God was with us 
in our yesterday. He is present with us right now. Everybody say entheos. And we have a bright hope for the future. So, as a song says, my God, I don't worry about tomorrow. There are things that I don't understand. I know who holds tomorrow. And I also know Who's holding my hand? Who's right there beside me? And, 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 and the same God that brought me this far is going to carry me into my future. Amen. 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 The same God. Same God. Same God. Same God. Same God. I hear you, Minister Leslie. In him we live. We move. And we have our being. That's, that's the entheos. Come on, and if you are enthusiastic about your journey, give him praise right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is life-changing. I'm just... going to give you a moment to think about that. So if worship, worship is in theos, in God. If it's in theos, in God, many of us have got to go back there. Because situations can take us away. It can take us away from that and convince us that there's no reason to rejoice. <laughs> or that heaven has a deaf ear to our cries. And the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I want to look at just a couple scriptures and then I'm going to let you go. Psalm 16. Psalm 16 says... Without you, nothing makes sense. I can try and try to find logic, and, but it doesn't make any sense. The New King James Version renders that verse, My goodness is nothing apart from you. You can lose your enthusiasm, your joy, when you choose to live apart from God, as opposed to recognizing and living as God is a part of you. You didn't understand that. Let me put it to you. Another way, and I was, I'm blessed to see uh, this beautiful family that was with us 
Wednesday and Thursday from Kenya. Stand up, please. Um, Kamel and Corbin, give them a hand. did this worship song that just messed me up. It amplifies that we must recognize that God is a part of us. Listen to the chorus. It says, it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in. Yeah. It's, it's his breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. He keeps reminding us of the fact that you cannot breathe your next breath without him. So why try to live apart from him? Now, recognizing He is a part of us. And the reason for our being in Theos, we are in him. He is in us. And if you haven't praised him enthusiastically the whole year, this is your moment to give him praise now. Hallelujah. touched three people and said, the devil can't have my enthusiasm. <laughs> David said in the same chapter, 16, verse 7, day and night, I'm sticking with God. I got a good thing going. devil has tried in so many ways to cause me to let go. And somebody said, I almost let go. Shout, I'm not letting go. Say it again, I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I won't be silent. I'm happy from the inside out. Same chapter and from the outside in. I'm firmly formed. Hallelujah. 
I had a one-way ticket to hell. That was my destination. But the blood of Jesus changed me. Now I got a reservation in glory. Can somebody shout with me right here? Hallelujah. Can somebody give God praise in here with me? Hallelujah. Jesus has made a difference. Do you know why I'm enthusiastic? It's because of the grace of God. It's because of the goodness of God. Now you got my feet on the life path. I'm all radiant on the inside. Pyphus, why are you so upbeat? Why are you, why are you so positive? You know what? You get in the presence of God. New King James Version says, in the presence of God, there is fullness. Yeah. You want joy? Get in the presence of God. Let me say that again. You want joy? Yeah. The department store ain't going to do it. I'm sorry, your boo just may not do it. But when you get in the presence of God, there is fullness. No, you can't get no more than that. And what I love about it, Elder, is when God starts pouring. What'd you say? It's always an overflow. He doesn't get to what he thinks is the apex of you. You don't even know that. But he keeps pouring and pouring until it spills over. It just bubbles over. It, my cup runneth over David said y'all got the message you got the message then praise God for special revelation now let me you're asking okay Sounds good, Pastor, but how can I actualize this? Give me Psalms 55. And I'm going to give you the background of this that David is speaking of. Yeah. His son, Absalom, has gotten beside himself. He's really feeling himself. He's um, popular and becoming powerful and it's all gone to his head and He's meeting people outside the palace gate, and they come, and they're telling him their troubles, and, oh, he's just working it uh, because they want to go in and have their, their cases tried. And he said, you know what? You got a real good case. The problem is you don't have good representation, and if I was in charge, I'd take care of that for you. So people started putting their confidence in Absalom. Even David's counselor, Ahipophel, puts his confidence 
in Absalom. And Absalom basically goes off to Hebron with David's permission. David doesn't know that he's about to start a coup to separate the kingdom. And he sends a word that now he is the king of Israel. And Lord have mercy. My boy Ahipophel has joined this group. And so you hear David and his heart uh, as the enemy is seeking to take away his enthusiasm. Now listen to me. In Psalms 55, beginning with verse 12, and this is from the Message Bible, it says, What I'm dealing with right here isn't the neighborhood bully mocking me. And this is not some foreign devil. I could tune that out. But man, it's you. My boy, we grew up together. You, my best friend, we walk together arm in arm. God, a third party in our conversation. And now you betrayed me like this. Here, here is a deeper picture of his hurt now in the New King James Version. I want you to hear this. He says, verse 4, let me pick it up at verse 4. My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. Verse 6, he says, If I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. <laughs> Lord have mercy. The enemy works in a way, as I said, to bring such pain in your life. And he knows how to do it by working on the people that are closest to you. To really get in your, your head. In your heart to the point where you feel like giving away, giving up. He says, I just I just wanna I just wanna be done with it. I just I just wanna throw up your hands. I hear you, Doreen. I I just wanna just wanna just wanna be done with it. Well, first of all, I want to praise God that you're here, that he kept you in the midst of what the enemy was doing to destroy you. Come on, put praises up in this place. Come on, y'all have to do better than that. Because some were right on the edge of death, but God kept you so when the enemy is unsuccessful in pushing you over the edge listen to me listen to me and what he does and I have experienced this it's a mentality of just flying away the fruit of it is this. You wander off in the wilderness of your mind. (laughs) 
So rather than moving forward, here's the situation. One of my frustrating things as a kid is when I played that music I told y'all about sitting in front is when the record got a scratch on it. This is what some of you all would do. You could take a penny, put it on the needle, and the weight of the needle would get it beyond. And the music is playing again. move you past your repeat. <laughs> For those of you that have been on repeat, you stuck. This is what I want you to do, is invite the weight of God's glory. Press on that. Get you unstuck. So you can sing again. Shout again, dance again, live again, have vision again. Come on, praise God for special revelations here. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do much better than that. You can do much better than that. Hallelujah. Joyce, Arvin, put some weight on it. David, put some weight on it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, just stand to your feet right now and just, just put some weight on the situation that you're dealing with. Just... Just praise him right now. Just put your weight on it. Put his weight on it. Hallelujah. <laughs> David found have a seat. David found himself going around. Troubled in his spirit is son gone, nuts. Friend betrayed him, trouble on every side. And then he just stops. He says, you know what? My soul shall worship the Lord. My soul shall rejoice. And, and look at what he says in this Psalm 56. 
16, Message Bible. He says, I call to God. That's what I'm going to do. I call to who? I call to who? I call to my friend. I text somebody. I email somebody. I call to God. God will help me. Now, now, now notice his perseverance, how he stuck with it. At dusk, dawn, what? All day. All day. When depression comes in, it's not going to want to leave you easily. When crazy thoughts come in, to suppress your praise and worship. It's not going to leave easily. He says, at dusk, dawn, and noon, deep sighs. Can you say, he hears me? He hears me. My fainteth cry He hears me. And through the Holy Spirit, he hears that which I am not even uttering. He's hearing through the Holy Spirit plots and schemes that I know not of. He hears me. Shout, he hears me. me. And not only does he hear me, He rescues me. So you're in the fire right now, I'm hearing in the spirit. There's trouble all around you. God hears you and he will rescue you. Has he rescued anybody? Don't ever forget this. And sleep with this tonight. My life, say my life, life. is well. I need you to say it again. My life is well. It might not be well with my pocketbook, but my life is well. Repeat after me. My life is whole. Yeah, it says a lot, and I need you to just think about it. The thing that you thought, or the one that you thought, that you could not live without, (laughs) shout, my life is well. My life is whole. whole. Put praise all over this place. Repeat after me. My life is well. My life is whole. My life is secure.
And I didn't even get this far in the other service. Even in the middle of danger. Because I got God on my side. I said I was going to leave y'all alone. Put praise in the air so I can stop. Worship is in God, so I need to go back to God. <laughs> Get my enthusiasm, enthusiasm, recognize that it's in me. There's so much more that we could say with that, but I need you to stand to your feet right now. <laughs> 